Fiona, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. It's good to be here. Diversity and inclusion. What is diversity and inclusion in context of new nuclear in the UK? Well, you know, I think diversity and inclusion means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For me, diversity is about enabling a, a large number of people from a whole variety of different backgrounds to um, engage with you and be involved with you in terms of whatever your thought processes are. Inclusion is about enabling everybody who's at the table to have something to say, to enable them to have a voice. And to do that, you actually need to create an environment that, that's for all, that enables lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds to have that voice, to feel as if they belong, and to feel as if they add value. Um, that's really important for the nuclear sector because we're about really doing something very different going forward. We're about creating um, new technologies for the future in nuclear that will enable us to meet climate change goals. Um, and to do that and to start thinking a bit differently about how we do that going forward and to think about how we actually play an important part in the energy mix means that we need to have a diverse and inclusive workforce to take that forward. So you raise an interesting point there. So you've got new technologies, an older workforce. How are you going to marry those two very different positions? You know, young apprentices coming in that need to learn safety and old ways of doing things, but also the fact they have different ways of thinking and different technologies and different ways of working. How do those two marry? So there's, there's a, a lot of new technologies that are currently on the market that the nuclear sector didn't create. Um, we have robotics technology, we have artificial intelligence, we have, God, we have, we have um, you know, um, new consoles that are being used to actually operate these systems, Game Boy technology, if you will, or, or maybe even starting to think about iPads and other sorts of smart devices that can be used. Now, what's really interesting is that um, if you speak to people who are just through school, um, they've been using this technology all of their life. Um, my niece is only 13 years old and she can teach me a thing or two in terms of actually how to use social media, um, things that I wouldn't even know. So the whole concept here is to actually use some of that new technology to best effect, bring our apprentices and young early careers people on board, get them to actually take this technology and use it in the marketplace and actually couple that up with our more experienced people who understand why you do things in a particular way within our sector, how you do things in a safe and secure way, um, and, and the whole approach to actually um, doing uh, work within the sector. And bringing that together, I think, is really, really important. And what of engagement of, of younger people, of people perhaps at school age or uh, planning where they're going to go for their degree? How are you engaging with those people that are going to be your your workforce for reactors that might run for 60, 80 years? Well, a lot of companies in the, in the nuclear sector are working very, very closely with schools at the moment and working with uh, teachers um, in terms of actually helping them understand what are uh, the sort of nuclear roles you could actually do. Um, you know, should you decide to actually do a, um, a, either a STEM subject or a, or a subject beyond STEM, that actually enables you to, to come and work in this place. Um, but at the Nuclear Skills Strategy Group, and that's, that's the group that, that I chair, we're actually looking at how we can work a bit more broadly as a sector to enable that. And what we're doing is we're actually thinking about how you create a sort of teacher's package to actually help explain the sorts of roles you can do in nuclear, the sorts of experiences you can have. I mean, I, I feel blessed in terms of the career I've had. I've worked on a whole variety of different sites in the UK. Um, my background is science and engineering. Um, and I've engaged in all of that and I've also even had opportunities to work abroad and and I think that actually getting out there and telling people about these opportunities um, is the way to get people interested. So how will diversity and inclusion change over the lifetime of reactor because of course it's, it's a long time you yeah. know with 60 years and 20 years possible life extension how will that evolve over that time period? So what's, um, what's interesting is that once you've actually constructed something um, so we always have a, a large programme of construction, first of all, where we have a, a, quite, a, quite a significant amount of people that engage in that. Once you get to the operational um, piece, um, we have a, a flat line for that period of time, and you've got quite secure jobs, actually, for that, for that longevity of the reactor um, 
programme itself for a period of potentially 60 years. Um, where you can get to is that a lot of the operations these days in terms of actually running these reactor systems will be remote and will use these new technologies. Um, and our new apprentices are absolutely geared up to be able to take that forward and actually use the technologies of today um, and the technologies of the future in terms of actually driving that forward. So I think that diversity and inclusion um, in terms of actually bringing in people, younger people, who actually have this sort of technology background now, the, the Game Boy sort of um, technologies that they've used over the years, will really benefit um, our sector going forward. So the Nuclear Skills Strategy Group, what are the next steps? What do you do next to generate the, the interest and, and, and invigorate younger people? So what we're doing at the moment, we're actually creating some, um, some vlogs, video logs, um, where we're actually going out there and, and talking to people in 30 second sound bites around, why is, what, what have you done in your career? Why has it been good for you? And we're actually targeting people at a whole variety of different age groups um, and levels of experience within the sector to really start to get out there in social media and actually to have some live case studies in terms of why it's great to actually work in this space. That's one thing. Um, we're, also, um, we're also creating this teaching pack that I've talked about in terms of actually starting to um, help teachers understand where nuclear could actually play a role and what sorts of jobs people might be able to get if they come and work in this space. Uh, that's just a couple of examples. And um, what's most exciting you? For me, um, the most exciting thing here is that um, I, I believe, I firmly believe that the, we need to do something different for climate change going forward. Um, net zero um, is something we must do. Um, in terms of actually how we do that, nuclear um, combined with renewables um, will be um, a very good way of enabling net zero to happen. So what's exciting me is that I, I can help with this through um, ensuring that we have the right workforce um, to take this forward, for future proofing it, as the technologies change over time, actually having people who actually know how to actually operate these systems and, and, and basically um, do that going forward. Um, and also to actually be in a situation where because we've actually got new technology coming in where robots play more of a role, there are, instead of manual handling, which typically would have been a certain type of individual who could do that, once you start doing things on a smartphone or a smart panel, or a Game Boy device, you actually open that up to a whole variety of different people that can actually now engage in that. Um, and that's quite exciting for me, and that, that drives the whole diversity agenda. Um, so I'm just excited about the fact that there's going to be lots of different jobs and opportunities for early careers people coming forward. I'm excited about helping them get to where they need to be in terms of that level of experience. And I'm excited about taking the new technologies that are out there in, in the marketplace currently and putting them into the nuclear environment. Exciting times. Well, Fiona, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure, thank you.